All right. So as uh, as I've showed you earlier on, this is this is what you see. This is your this is your Apache JMeter where you'll be carrying out your uh, performance testing. That is what it looks like. So let's consider some of the terminologies in JMeter, what they mean and all that. So what is thread group in JMeter? These are some of the terms you come across when you are doing, when you are performing your, when you are doing your performance testing. Stuff like thread group, thread, concurrent user and simultaneous user. So what is thread group in JMeter? So it's a set of threads executing the same scenario. You set the number of iteration in the configuration. Thread behavior is defined according to ramp up and the thread wants the number of iterations per thread as elapsed. So this is how a thread group element looks like. So if, if I go back to, let me go back to the proper one. So this is your test plan, right? You can rename your test plan to, let's say, demo, project that will be the name of your that will be the name of your project that you are working on and to set your trade group you right click on your test plan which i just changed to my demo project now you go to add trade users and trade group so that is the route you take in adding your trade group and you click on it so this is your trade group i can as well rename my trade group i can call it users right because thread in this instance they refer to threads as a user so that is what threads uh thread group contains it contains your actions before and after the your action the actions you want the system to take uh during the test whether it comes across any issues and other how you want it to respond to that is there you set your number of threads which is the number of users you want to run with your ramp up period which i'll explain to you in a bit and your loop count you can set your blue you can set your loop count to infinite if you set it to infinite that means your your test will continue to run till jesus comes so or you can specify the number of time you want your test to run so that is that Let's go back to the slide and see what we need to do next. All right. So thread group elements. Thread group elements are the initial step of JMeter test plan. A number of thread users can be defined in a thread group, as I've shown you just now. So each thread simulates a real user requesting to the server under a test. So they are using thread to simulate a real life user using the system, how they will respond and order to the system. So if you set the number of threads, thread as 20, JMeter will create and simulate 20 virtual users during the load test. So a, a diagram here can help us understand it better. So when you set your, um, sorry. So when you set your thread, to 20 as 20 right that means you want you want the system to simulate uh 20 virtual user using the system either at the same time or depends on the loop probably after you want them to be eating probably the login button after two seconds uh which i'll show you how that is done in a bit so I just showed you, I've shown you this uh, in my diagram earlier on. This is how you set your thread group. So to create your thread group, you right click on your test plan, which you can change the name of your test plan. But when you first open your JMeter up, you see it as test plan, but you can change it to the name of your project that you are doing. So mine, I set mine to demo project, I believe. You right click on it. You go to add thread users and thread group and that will open up your thread group for you. All right, so the thread group panels hold the following components. Number one, action to be taken after a sampler error. 
So if a JMeter catch any sampler error during test execution, you can tell it how to react in that scenario from the following available options. So you can tell it to continue to start ne next trade, to stop trade, to stop test, or to, to stop test now. So continue means the test will continue. The test will continue. It will ignore error and move to the next element in the tree. If it anchor, if it encounters any error while running, or if you click on start next trade loop it to, to stop current trade and the next trade will start if you click on stop trade this will stop the current trade execution and nothing else will happen if you click on stop test then to, this will stop the entire test execution and if you click on stop test now the entire test will be stopped abruptly this is what they are talking about if i can show you so you can see you can you can select start next trade loop you can select stop trade stop test or stop test now which i just explained to you but most of the time it's always it's always on. all right so trade properties um let me explain to you quickly what trade properties is so when you are setting your trade properties so probably i want the number of trade i want to run is 20 right that means 20 virtual users right i want to simulate 20 users uh for this test and my ramp up period per seconds i will say 40 right i'll explain this to you so what this means is right i've got 40 seconds to load 20 users on the system but how am i going to do it but all i know is that i've got the total number of seconds which is 40 seconds and it in 40 seconds i want to load 20 users into my application right so the simple calculation to this is the ramp up period is divided by the number of threads so in this scenario, that will be 40 divided by 20, which will give us two seconds. So that means every two, two seconds, one, one user will be loaded until we reach 40 seconds. And by the time we reach 40 seconds, we've already loaded 20 users. Number of trades I want to run, I want 20 users, right? I want to simulate 20 users uh, on my system. So the num my number of trade on my number of users is 20. My ramp up period in seconds is 40. So meaning in 40 seconds, I want to load 20 users, but at what intervals do I load them? So for you to get the, the intervals you load each user, you have to divide the ramp up period in seconds over the number of trade or the number of users that you are simulating. In our own case, this will be 40 divided by 20, which will give us two seconds. Many, every two, two seconds, I want to load one, one user. So after one user is loaded, the first user, I'll wait, the system will wait two seconds. It, it will load the second user. The system will wait two seconds. It will load the third user till it reaches 20. And by the time it reaches 20, we've already covered that 40 seconds. Let's go to the slide and see whether it says something different. All right, so number of threads or users simulates the number of users or connections to your server application. And your ramp up period in seconds tells the JMeter how long to take to ramp up to the full number of threads chosen. So for example, if you set number of threads to 20 and ramp up period to 40, then JMeter will wait till 40 seconds to make all threads up and running. So that means each trade will start two seconds late after the previous trade was started. 
And the formula I just told you is the ramp up period over the number of threads uh, in seconds. And your loop can't, your loop can't is this one. How many times you want to run this test? Do you want, if you click on infinite, that means this test will run till Jesus comes until you physically, until you stop it. But you can, instead of leaving it infinite, you can indicate how many times you want it to be run. Probably 20. Or probably twice. It, it depends on you. So you really want to say that. Okay. All right, let's go to the slide. So that is, so the loop can, the number of times it takes to be executed. So if you need to run the test forever, then select the forever infinite uh, checkbox. And the scheduler, this is the old version. The scheduler has been removed uh, has been removed now in the new in the new version of JMeter. So there's no scheduler. Scheduler is just to what it does is you can you can plan your test ahead. You can schedule the time, the start time of your test and the end time of your test and the test will kick off when the start times uh, happen. And that is why I just explained. Which is the same thing with this one, but there's no, that functionality is not there at the moment. So samplers, what are samplers? Samplers in JMeter allows JMeter to send different types of requests to a server. So samplers are the actual requests and JMeter sends to the web server on the test. So each sampler acceptance action generates one or more sample results. So the sample results have various attributes, sources, fill, elapsed time, data size, etc. and can be viewed in the various listeners. So some important samplers available are as follow, and I will show you what samplers are in JMeter itself. So if you click on users add, if you right click, sorry, if you right click on users, which is your thread group, but I, I rename mine as users, uh, you click on add, you click on sampler, and the list, what you can see on your list on your screen now are the different type of samplers that we have. But despite the fact that we have all these different type of sampler, the one that is popularly used, mostly used, is your HTTP sampler, which is your HTTP request. And that is what you see when you go on any web page, HTTP, blah, blah, double slash, you see. And that is what we'll be using for our own test as well. So you'll be, we're going to be using HTTP request. So if you right click on your user, which is your trade group, you go to add sampler and you come and choose HTTP request. So click on it. That will open this box for you. And you can rename it as well, depending on the test uh, that you are doing. Probably this one probably is the login functionality I'm testing here, so I can rename my sampler to be login because that is the test I'm performing, right? Let me see the slide before I go out, go ahead and explain. Okay, let me just explain it anyway. And the server name or the IP. This is where you'll be putting um, your URL. So let me go, let me do something quickly. Let me go to the web, to any website. So let me go to www.giftread. All right, so this is the, let's assume this is the site I want to be doing my performance testing on, right? So my HTTP or my IP address will be this one. So I can copy this one. Go back to my JMeter. And that will be the URL that I'll be using. 
and because it already start with http here right i don't need to include http here i can remove i can remove it from even ww so i don't need that i can leave it like that or i can include the ww right but it doesn't really matter i can remove it and you can see we have http request type we have method get method like api if you've attended if any one of you have attended uh api training or you've seen the video on youtube you know we have different http http verb request for api get post put option delete same thing we have it on uh when we are doing a performance testing as well so you set your method order is get and you set the path that you want the users which is your thread to eat on so going back to the going back to the giftfree.com so let's assume i want to click on sign in that is what i want to test on right so the endpoint you can also call it endpoint my endpoint what i'm going to be using will be this bit that is what I want the user to eat on. So you copy that, go back to the J meter, and that will be the path. So I can remove this slash here because I think I copied here. And that will be the path that you are setting. So when you run this test, it will navigate to www.gift3.com and because you are getting something, the method will be set for you. And the path, you need to set the path. That means the path that your threads, that your user will be eating on, on your server, you set that path. All right, let's go back to the slide. Any questions so far? So before I before I go on, any question on what I've shown you so far, probably in regards to downloading Java, extracting your files, uh, setting your environment variables for Java Home, uh, installing your JMeter, uh, your test plan on your JMeter, your uh your http request what you've seen so far any questions so far i can take any question now if you've got any question before we write on so any question please type it or There's a question that what happens if you are not able to load all the thread within the given time? You are not the one loading it. Let me let me go back there and explain that bit once more. Because you've already set it, right? There's no way you will not be able to load it. All right? You are telling what you are doing here, you are telling the system. We are trying to simulate the real life um environment the real the real user out there someone like me and you the typical example would be okay to start with why we are using why they are not why all the users are not eating the server at the same time is if i tell you i think we've got probably like 30 of us on this training right now if i tell you right now that everybody on your mark said go type in www.amazon.com it is not despite the fact that i told you the same time the url to type it is impossible for the 30 of us to eat on that url at the same time that i told you the same time but it is impossible for the 30 of us to eat that url www.amazon.com and enter the same time it is impossible. So that is the same thing we are trying to achieve uh, with our traits here, with our ramp up. 
we don't want the users because we know it's really impossible for everyone to take a party to take the same action at the same time so we are trying to emulate the real live uh, uh, scenario that okay we have 20 users or we can say we have 30 of us which is 30 users right you have 30 users and you have 60 seconds for all these 30 users to eat on www dot uh amazon.com it is possible we achieve that in 30 seconds it is possible but what we are now telling the system is right we are 20 and we have 40 seconds for the 20 of us to eat uh amazon uh, www.amazon.com right so how do we now go about it because we don't want it to happen at the same time and that is when the calculation comes in that, okay, the, the most suitable way or realistic way of doing it is, okay, let's a uh, ramp up period, let's divide a ramp up period, period, uh, period, which is in seconds, let's divide it over the number of users or trade that we have. In our own situation here, we have 40 uh, seconds, right? And we have 20 users. So that is 40 divided by 20, which will give you two seconds. So I can guarantee you it is possible for us on this platform. If I tell you that everyone go to www.amazon.com, enter, it is possible for all of us to achieve that two seconds as an interval. So if the first user click on that, enters, the system will wait two seconds to load the second user, the system will wait two seconds to load the third user till those till the 40 second is being used up. So at the end of the 40 seconds, all the 20 users, every one of us, we are already on Amazon on www.amazon.com website. We are telling the system what to do. So it is it, it is it is not impossible to achieve so you you achieve because you are setting the criteria you are setting the prerequisite all right any other let me see if there's any other question before i go on what will happen if we encounter any error during the execution all right another good question let me go back to the to the j meter all right this answers your question and as i mentioned earlier on it depends you are controlling the system right and you are telling the system this is the action i want you to take if you encounter any problem during your execution it's like you using ways right when there is traffic you go on your ways again and ask for alternative routes and ways will take you through an alternative route because you are com you are controlling it right same thing with this one before your test, you must have indicated what you want the system to do in case errors of samplers are occurred. And this is where you choose uh, the next course of action. Whether you want the system to continue or you want to stop where uh, the point at the point that you encounter that error, at the trade that you encounter that error, you want it to stop but you want it to start the next trade. You want it to load the next user. You can stay there as well. Or you want the trade to stop. You don't want to go ahead again. You want it to stop. You can indicate it. Or the entire test, you want it to stop. So it depends on what you click on before your test. And that is what is going to happen when your test is executed. I think, I hope I've, I've been able to answer that. Let me see if there's any other question. I have installed I have installed Jmeter and I click on Jmeter but can't locate the Java on my system. Okay. 
if you've installed JMeter, right? Like mine now, when I when I uh, kickstart my JMeter, I didn't go through my I didn't go through my um, folder. That is when I ask you to. If you go to the bottom of your screen where the search uh, engine is, if you type JMeter dot, if truly you have JMeter installed on your system, it will come up with something. It will come up with something like that, like this. I don't know whether you can see my screen. If, so if I type JMeter dot bat, it will fetch that folder for me. Any weather folder is, it will fetch it. I don't know if you can see my screen. You can see that JMeter dot bat is appearing on my screen. That is inside, that is coming from my bin folder inside uh, my JMeter. And if I click on enter, that will kick, that will open the command prompt, run some commands, and my Apache JMeter will open eventually. So you can double check if truly that you've, you've installed JMeter on your system, then you can open it that way, or you can locate the folder if you go to, I don't know where you where where you've saved it, but you can try and check your program files. Probably is there, and you can open your bin folder from there and kickstart it. Let me see if there's any other question. What happens if you are not okay? I think I've answered, I've answered this. What happens if you are not able to load all the trail within the given time? That could only happen if and if uh, you encounter if any of the trail encounters error or if the test encounter error, then that might not be possible. Then it's also it as well depends on what you stipulate the condition that you've given whether you want it to continue despite the error or you want the entire test to stop. So whatever you've indicated, if you've indicated that the entire test should stop, then the entire test will stop. But if you want the test to still continue despite the error that the sampler has experienced, uh, encountered, then the test will uh, continue. And it, but, yeah. I'm just scrolling up to read question. For those who have installed IntelliJ, do we still need to go through the setup environment variable? If you have it, that is why, you know why, why I first said is you have to check whether you've got Java installed already. So if you've gone through the process of IntelliJ setting your environment variables and all that, you don't have to do it again. So, and this is the only way you can know whether you've got Java up and running before or not. If you go to your command prop and type Java dash version, it will tell you whether you have Java uh, installed or not. So if you come here and you can see that, yes, I have Java installed, the next thing you can do, you can that, to see whether you've got your environment variables uh, set up as well, is you can go to your program files, your PC, right click on this PC, go to properties, go to advanced settings, go to environment variables and check whether you've set up your Java home. It is the same thing. It, it Once you've set it up once, it is the same thing. You don't need to set it up twice. So if you've set it up for IntelliJ, kudos. You don't need to go through the stress, this stress again the second time. So Java is Java. And if you set your Java home, Java home is Java home. So you don't need to do it twice. Not that one Java home works for IntelliJ, why the other Java home works for JMeter. No. So it's the same thing. If you set it up already, then that is fine. You are good to go then. All right, let me check one more. If there's one more question I can answer before, before I write on.
Yes, uh, Java JDK. Actually, you should install Java JDK, uh, the executable file. Yeah, it is compatible for to use. Yes, you can use Java JDK. Actually, that is the one you meant to download. But I think you have to register through Oracle or something before you can download the Java JDK. But yes, Java JDK, you can use Java JDK. It's, it is compatible. All right. I think that is all the questions. OK. Let me go back to the. Let me go back to the slide. All right, so we've talked about samplers, right? And that is when the sampler that we'll be using is HTTP, is HTTP request because you are dealing with web. You know. All right. So complete list of available available samplers. I've showed I've, I showed you I showed you this earlier on from my own JMeter, but this is a complete list. You've got Java request, you've got GMS, you've got different type of samplers on here, but the one that we are particular about is the HTTP sampler because that is what we'll be using. All right. So HTTP request, I think I've discussed, I've, I've talked about this as well, but I can as well quickly go back and recap on that quickly. All right, so let me go to my JMeter. All right, so the slide we are on now is just to explaining what and what we are doing on this page, on our HTTP request page. So the first thing is the name. When you when you first load it, the way you the way we go here is when you right click on the user, click on add sampler, and you select your HTTP request. Then we are on this. Uh, then we are on this page. So you can name your sampler, but so I'm naming mine. Let's say login. That's just an example. If that is what I'm working on. You can name it according to what your name, what what you are working on. But when you first load it, it's gonna be HTTP request that will be there. So you can change that accordingly to what you are doing. All right. Oh my. Okay. So I put login because I'm assuming I'm working on login, right? And the next thing for you to set is your server name or your IP name. And I showed you how you can get it. It's basically your URL. And you don't need to you don't need to include the HTTPS forward slash www dot. You don't need that because the HTTP has already been indicated. We've already chosen HTTP request. So it's any request we are sending definitely is http so it, it is going to start with http and the other one is the method the type of method or the type of http request that we are sending and the the next key thing you have to set is the path so for me this is the path i want the user to be eating on and this is where i want to base my response time my throughput this is what i want to base it on so that is that, and I showed you how you can get that. It's the endpoint. If you are familiar, if you've done API before, then you'll be familiar with with endpoint. So basically, in your path is the endpoint that you'll be eating on that you indicate in your path. So let's assume it's the search button I want them to click on or to be eating on. So my endpoint will now be different from what I have earlier on. So my endpoint now will be home forward slash search. So control copy and that is what I'm going to paste in my path. So it all depends on what you are working on. So your path will be what you want your 12 users to be eating on. So if you want them, if it's the login you want to test, then you want them to be eating on the login button. 
if it's a search button, you want to calculate the response time when customer click on search button, how much time it takes them to take them to the search page. You want to calculate them. So you want them, you're using uh, 20 trade group, 20 users to simulate that. So they'll be eating on that and you are calculating, you want them to, you, you are calculating the response time when they eat on that particular endpoint that you want. So you change the path accordingly to what you are working on. So that is that. And you can set parameters as well. At the bottom of your screen, you can set if there's any parameter you want to set, you can set it. If there's a file you want to upload to your test, you can upload the file and all that. And at the bottom of your screen, you can see detail, add, add from clipboard, delete, up and down. Those are different actions you can take on this page. All right, so let's go back to our spread. All right, so that's the explanation we just had now. And the next thing we are looking at is listeners, right? Who are the listener? What what do we refer to as the listeners? Let's go to JMeter and see what listeners are. All right. Okay. So if you right click on your HTTP request, you go to add. You go down to listeners, and these are the many listeners that you can choose for, from and what are listeners after running your test it is it, so you need to indicate the type how you want the result to be displayed the most convenient way for you probably that is readable for you or that is okay for you that you that is explanatory enough for you for you so you have to indicate it how you want the result to be displayed and the any of these that you select is what is referred to as listeners so we have you can you can choose view as view results tree you can choose summary report you can choose aggregate report you can choose view result in table you can choose view results in graph. You can view your assertion results. So the different ways you can view your result is referred to as your listeners because that is the only way you can see the result of the request that you've sent. That is when you can see the throughput, you can see the size, the byte that is returning, you can see the response time that is returning, the average response time that is returning reporting well so now you you decide whether you want to see those results in graph or you want to see it as a table or you want to see it as a report depends on what's what works best for what works best for you so you indicate how who what and what your listeners is and you can use more than one listeners you can use two listeners you can use three listeners so i can select I want to view my result as table. At the same time, I want to view my result as uh, a tree. And at the same time, I want to view my result as a graph. So this will give you different layouts of your results. It will give you the format of the table format. It will give you the graph format. And it will give you the report uh, format, all depending on, on what you've chosen uh, to run. But some of them are not advisable to use when you are uh, doing load testing. Why? It's because they consume so much space and they can slow down your run. So they are not advisable for you to use. But for testing purpose, for our training purpose, for your training at home, you can select multiple, right? just for you to feel just for you to have a feel uh the difference between them the layout which one works best for you which one you like which one you know so that is how so you go to once again you right click on your http which i've named my http i've renamed my as login right 
you right click on it, you go to add, you go to listeners, and you choose the different type of listeners that you want to use. All right? Okay, let me just choose for choosing sake. Let me choose probably table. So when I run my test, my result will be displayed on this blank screen that you are seeing right now. It will be displayed as a table. It will give me the sample, my start time. It will give me the trade name. It will give me the label of my test, the sample time. It will give me the status, the bytes, that is the size that is returning, the send bytes, the latency. It will give me all this information in a table format. And you can be able to decide whether it uh, it meets your criteria or or not. So that is what listener is all about. Let's go back to. All right. So what you can see, I know you can see it properly. It's just a different type of listeners that we have: graph result, uh, view as tree, monitor result, blah blah blah, and summary report so those are just different type which i just showed you right now so table if you want to view your result as table this is a typical when you run when you run your test this is how it's going to return it back to you in a table format this is a sample of what table looks like so you can see the sample one two three four the start time how it's loading the users um, as per the time, as per the loop count that you set. Uh, the trade name, if you're giving your trade any name, the label of your of your of your test, the sample time. You can see some in two seconds, one seconds, one, two, two, and the status. All these ones, they passes. You can see if it, if any one of them fails, you see a, a red cross there, but all these ones passes. And you can see the byte that is returning from every it. You can see the latency and you can see the connect time as well when they eat it. So that is a table format uh, if you choose to view in a table format. View result as tree. Sorry, this is the picture. The diagram didn't go with the apologies about that. But you can, as I said, you can as well view as tree as well. So view result tree displays a tree consists of all the sampler responses along with their request. So please note that view result tree should not be used, you can see, during load or stress test, as I mentioned earlier, as it consumes a lot of resources like memory and cpu so you are not you are it is not advisable for you to use uh, this type of listeners when you are running a load test because it consumes a lot of your resources typical example probably your memory so it is recommended to use it with functional testing or debugging purpose as i said you can use it because you are doing well on a training platform you can use it for your because you are not running a load testing so you can use it for your functional testing or for debugging purposes assertion results this is another type of listeners right if you choose this listeners just the same way i don't know how far you've gone with your automation there is something in your automation if you haven't done it uh your given when then your bdd your then is your assertion right your then you want to validate with your then clause you want to validate that the result that your test is uh displaying you want to validate that yes it is right according to what you've written in your steps or your scenarios so you want to validate that yes i'm on the right page or my test uh you want to validate the result of your test. So you use the assertion, which is your then clause. Same thing, you can use it in your performance testing as well. So you can assert that, you know, after clicking on login, 
and it takes them to a login screen. You can assert that they are on that screen, they are on the right screen. And you can do that with a text. You can assert that probably there's one text that like, okay, let me just, let me go to, let me go to a login page. So let's say the test is to, no, don't let me, don't let me use that. Let me use something more. Okay. Let's say the search, the test is for the users to click on search button, right? So you can assert that, yes, it's on the right page. Like you can use this test that item posted to give read because I believe this is only where, this is the only page you see this type of a text because you are posting item here. So you can confirm that, yeah, this test is visible when your user landed on this page. So you can assert that, yes, I can see item posted to give it. I can see this text. Or you can use any text. You can use leather and back is visible when landed on this page. So you can assert your test. So to it's just another measure to validate your test, to say, oh, yes, it's doing the right thing. Because if your test gets to this page, probably there's no assertion. You don't know whether it's it's landing on the right page. But if you include assertion, the assertion can prove it to you that, yeah, it's landed on the right page. And I can assert, I can verify to you that, yes, I can see item posted to give it. I can see this text. So you can do stuff like that with assertion, with assertion listeners. And that is what it is about. Let go, let's go back to the slide and just read it. So assertion result, assertion result displays the result of assertion applied on the sampler. So you can see in the below figure, if any assertion fails, it to look like this. So please note that the assertion result should not be used again during load or stress tests as it consumes a lot of resources like memory and CPU. So same thing like the graph as well. So it is recommended to use it with functional testing or debugging purpose. But this is this is the type. This is what it's going to look like when you use assertion uh, listeners. So that is how your result will look like. And this is a failed. This is a failed test. If the test passes, if the assertion passes, you will not see any message here. But because the actual result differs from the expected result. That is a failure, right? And that is why you are getting, because you included uh, assertion result as one of your listeners. And that is why it's telling you that response assertion test field, test expected to contain download book. But unfortunately, when it landed on that page, it did not contain download book, which makes the test to fail. So it's just an extra measure for you to validate your test to know that, yes, you are doing the right thing. Any question? Let me see if there's any question. So this is just all setting up. Will I call it setting up the framework, if that is the right word? So next week, we actually will we'll, we'll have a look how we can actually run our test using uh, using JMeter. Then how we can use BlazeMeter as well to run our test as well. So we're going to look at that next week. So any question, please do ask me now before I want to stop at a, at an even number. I don't want to stop at the odd number. So that is why I'm stopping at 50. And I want to take any questions on board before our times run up because if I should start anything, I won't be able to finish it. So that's why I want to take a break now and for you to ask any question that you might want to ask me. Please, we used to give us in depth training on passing parameters like simulating different series. I'm, I'm sure you want to say scenarios. We'll try as much as possible. Let me go back to. 
we'll try as much as possible to cover the the basics what you need to know about performance testing we'll try because we have limited time so we have to we have to prioritize on what i think is most important for you to know now because i tell you you can't be trained on everything you still have to do your personal read-ups you have to still visit google, visit google as they always say google is our best friend that is our best buddy so you, you you still have to do your own personal reading personal uh you know exploration you have to still explore but we try and cover because we, we've only got two weeks which is this week and next week to cover performance testing and there's no way you can cover the whole lot in two weeks but what we can cover in two weeks are the key aspects of performance testing what you need to know as per your interview probably you are called on the telephone for interview or you are going for a one-on-one -on -one interview what you need to know or what you need to say that because after we run uh after we run next week's test at least you'll be able with what you've seen so far you'll be able to say some buzzword regarding performance testing and when you now see it works you'll be able to even say much more better whether at interview uh for telephone interview or one-on-one -on -one interview things like http requests your samplers your listeners if I didn't tell you, if nobody has like 30 minutes ago, if I ask you what is the listener, you might tell me probably it's something to do with radio or television. But now you know what a listener is. So you'll be you you, you the focus will be the focus will be to concentrate on what is needed because I tell you there is no way you can cover the whole lot in two weeks but what two weeks would do for you is to kick start you in the journey of performance testing that is what it's going to do for you but you still have to do a whole lot yourself you have to do a read up yourself you have to practice yourself you have to build upon the foundation that you've been given yourself but will set you on the motion and then you need to control the vehicle yourself or the car yourself so that is that is that is it but i i could guarantee you by next week at least you'll be able to run you'll be able to run basic test using jmeter and blaze meter and those are the things you can tell them at interview as well whether the telephone or uh one on one what are the tools you've used uh for your performance testing before yes because you've used it you can confidently say yeah i use jmeter or yes i use blaze meter how did you use jmeter yes i created my test plan from my test plan i did my http request from my http request i had to create my listeners um set up my trade uh, my trade group my uh, my users and all that these are the things you don't know before but these are the things that you know now so you are better of someone who has no knowledge about it and as i said at the beginning of the course they are looking for someone that like jack of all trade has got a bit and pieces of everything although they are looking for a functional tester but at the same time they are looking for someone who has got a bit of experience in performance testing who has got a bit of experience in api testing rest assured blah 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 so that is why we are trying to cover as much as possible just for you to be exposed to it just in case you are asked and i tell you if they call you tomorrow and ask you something about performance testing i'm sure you'll be able to tell them one or two things about performance testing and that is the that is the trick so we'll try as much as possible to set you up and but you still have to do the majority of work yourself you have to work you have to build on the foundation that we are setting for you but next week you see it how it will actually you see it in motion and if time permits next week someone else if i'm able to cover the j meter and blaze meter uh, within the specified period within or before the two hours then someone else will come 
and teach you or train you on another tools which you can add on your CV as well, which is new load. So that means you, you've used three tools for your performance testing or you know how to use three tools for your performance testing and which can as well go on your CVs as well. So that is the joy of it. Any other question? Uh, please, after running a test, can you show us how to generate performance or load test results that stakeholders? You see all these results, you, you generate it, you see, you see it from your listeners. That's how you generate your result as well. So you can import that to your, I don't know if you got it, probably into your report. So the result that you'll be getting from your listeners, you can convert that into a reporting that probably you'll be showing in for your, to your stakeholders and all that, which you'll see we'll, we'll be using different uh, listeners uh, next week. Uh, next week for you to see which are the common performance testing tools used in the industry i tell you the slide i showed you earlier on are all industry standard uh tools that are used out there but i could tell you where i work at the moment they use uh, visual studio because you can use visual studio for your performance testing as well but this is the thing this you know they say if you learn how to drive with a b2 car right with, with a b2 car there is no car that you won't be able to drive so if they give you a mercedes benz you'll be able to drive because you are driving with a tough you learned your driving with a very difficult car right it's the same thing when it comes to these tools you just need to know how one works if you know how one works it is applicable to other tools. They work the same way. They just have different names. So when we are talking about industry standard tools that they are using out there, they are using JMeter. They are using BlazeMeter. JMeter is an open source. You don't have to pay for it. BlazeMeter, the Chrome extension, yes, it's free. But if you want to really use BlazeMeter uh, itself as a performance testing tool, then you have to pay for it. There is after a certain number of threads, you can if you want to use I think more than I don't know whether more than fifty threads, then you have to subscribe to use it. So it's the same thing with the tools with the functional testing tools like uh, Visual Studio, IntelliJ, uh, Cypress. We have some open source tools that you don't have to pay for. At the same time, you, we have the paid ones. Even Visual Studio, there are, there, there's a paid version. The enterprise or the professional is a paid version. Just that you can do as much as possible with the community version. So, and these organizations are using both open source tools and the paid ones as well. It depends on what they can afford. But I could tell you everything, JMeter, BlazeMeter, New Load, uh, they are using all of them. It all depends on where you work and what, uh, after doing their POC, with, which is their pro, uh, proof of concept, uh, which one they decide to go for, which one is beneficial to them. Probably they are cost effective. They want to use an open source. They can use something like JMeter. But if they've got money, they want to say, yeah, we've got money, we can buy the tools. They can go for something like v, uh, Visual Studio Professional, or they can go for BlazeMeter when they know they can use a uh, virtual user, probably like 500,000 virtual users uh, on BlazeMeter, you know? So it all depends on the industry, but all of them are industry standards, be it open source or paid ones. They are all open. They are all industry standards. Uh, let me see if I can take more, one more question. I didn't really get a clear answer to my question. What I mean is when you ask to simulate like 50 users on a system and the 50 users are to have different session IDs, are we going to have, are we going to be 
thought in depth how to write a parameter to undo it. As I said, it's let Google be your friend, right? Apart from that, you are setting the criteria, right? Before you run, before you perform any test, you are the one setting the criteria for the test that you are about to run. And the test will run based on your criteria, right? The parameter you're talking about is different. That is not criteria. What you're referring to your question is regarding the criteria. And you set a criteria before you run your test. And your test will run based on the criteria that you've set. So if your loop counts, it depends on what you set on your loop count and all that. Those are your criteria that you need to set before you run a test. But probably when we actually see it in action, we'll understand what I actually mean by, by that. Or it might be impossible now, or it might be unclear now, but probably when we run it, we'll see what we're talking about. Or perhaps give us a link to read up on the parameter thing. If you go on Google, right? If you type J, no, 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 not even J meter. Yeah, you can type J meter, or you can go on YouTube and type J meter or whatever. You're going to see more than enough answers on on J meter, and probably you go, you will see more answers on parameter criteria and all that. So it is Google, YouTube and Google are our best friend, best friend ever that you can ever ask for. Yeah, we'll be able to we'll cover what we can cover, the basics, the fundamental that we can cover for performance testing. But it is impossible to cover extensively because this is performance testing is just like a add-on to the functional testing that you are doing. The functional testing you are doing is a key part that you need to really, really know. So doing performance testing is just an add-on knowledge you need to have because uh, you are not, as a, you might get a job as a performance test, a tester on its own without having anything to do with functional testing or API testing. But the key aspect of this training is actually functional testing. That is where they will load you with so many scripts, writing your BDD, your Gherkin, you know, you, that you'll be set for the market. But it will be nice for you if you have an edge over other out there. If you have an edge, if you have something that can stand you out over others out there. And that is when performance testing and knowledge in performance testing comes in. Not that you'll be a full performance tester, but they might need your knowledge about performance testing for the role that you're applying for or you applied for. But the key focus when you're applying for automation should still be functional testing. But what I'm saying is part of their job description now is when you even, if you're applying for a functional testing role, you still see that uh, a knowledge of API is needed, a knowledge of performance testing is needed, despite the fact that you are a functional tester. So that is so that is the trick. It is just an added uh, add-on ad advantage for you over other people out there searching for the same role as you, it, just to give you an edge over them, because you'll be able to tell uh, when you are called for interview, the agency or whatever face to face, you will be able to say more than enough when it comes to performance testing. And that is all is needed. And that is what we are going to cover. So on this note, it is already 10 o'clock. Thank you everyone for our time. I uh, really appreciate it. And we shall see next week, same time by the special grace of God.